Hi, welcome back to part two of our discussion on the CMOS process. Let's quickly recap what we did earlier. We first had a P substrate and then we defined the N well. The N well is where all the PMOS transistors will be located and the N MOS transistors will be seated in the the P substrate. After which we deposited a layer of gate oxide and then followed by a layer of polysilicon to form the gate of the transistors. So if you're looking for the gate of the transistors, you should always be looking for the polysilicon layer. Next we will look at how the active areas are formed. We will use uh, N plus the mass to define the areas in which the active the N plus active areas are to be formed. So as you see the mass the N plus diffusion mass has an opening over here and then after the photolithographic and the editing process the openings of the oxide along the surface of the P substrate is a patent, a patent. and um, next what we'll do is to implant the n-type dopants on the surface of the P substrate and then drive this dopants to, uh, into the P substrate using a thermal drive-in. The result of which you have an N plus area as shown in the slide over here. So you have N plus here and N plus here. Well, one of which could be used as a source and a drain or drain and source. So source and drain active areas can be used interchangeably for this CMOS process. Let's go see how the um, active areas for the PMOS transistors are formed. Uh, again, we use now a P plus mast then this time we the areas in which the P plus diffusion is to be uh, done is patent so again like the N plus diffusion area First, dopants are implanted on the surface of the end well and then they are driven into the end well. So then you have your P pass regions. Your source and the drain again are interchangeably. Interchangeable, sorry. So, having created your transistors, you, you then want to make connections to. You want to connect the transistors to the other parts of the circuits. So to do this, we need to create contact openings so that the conductor conductive layers can be um, deposited in these openings and make connections to the active areas. So over here, you see the gate ox, the fuel oxide and the openings are made in the gate ox uh, in the fuel oxide using a photolithographic process so the, this openings the patterns for the openings are defined by the contact mast after which we will deposit the conductor in this case it's probably it could be aluminium. The, this is called the metallization mass. It defines the patterns the, of the electrical connections made by the metal. It's very similar to the, the wires that one would use in a normal connecting up a normal uh, circuit. So the, this metal mass would define the where the metals 
would be used to connect the devices together. And finally, we would deposit a layer of passive addition. This is to protect the chip the, from the environmental effects such as corrosion. Okay, so let's summarize the CMOS process steps. We started first with a silicon wafer uh, that was a PDD silicon wafer. Then we define the transistor bulk regions. The bulk regions are the well and the substrate. So we define the well and the areas that are not inside the well would then be the P substrate. In our process, this was an N well process, so the well is N doped. Next, we define the, the polysilicon gate on the transistors. The two steps process. First, we deposited the tin gate oxide layer and then we deposited the polysilicon. After which, we define the active areas, both the N plus diffusion areas and the P plus diffusion areas. This would form the source and drain areas of the trans transistor. Now to make interconnections, we create openings in the field outside using the contact mask and then we deposit the interconnect layer for, uh, for example aluminum. Now the, in some chips the interconnections are very complex and require more than one interconnect layer. So this process of creating openings in the, the fuel oxide by means of contacts or VRs and then for, after which depositing another layer of metal uh, would be repeated until all the necessary connections have been made. Finally, we protect the chip using the passivation the layer and the, layer, the openings in the passivation layer so that uh, wires from the external the from the from from outside can be brought into the die okay so that's the summary of the CMOS process